uh, went out of Psalms into various parts of, uh, of the Bible. And just this week, there's been, um, well, really in the last probably week, um, in the last seven days, God has redirected me back into the Psalms. Uh, I've shared this with both churches, but it seems like that God takes me uh, into certain books of the Bible or certain portions of, of Scripture and wants me to stay there for a while, maybe to, uh, because he knows that repetition for me uh, helps me to, to remember, and I still have trouble even with that, um, re remembering. But, um, but before we get started, uh, I want to encourage you to give. If you are a, a part of one of our churches, you have heard the term GiveLify. It's in the lower left corner of your screen, um, right here. I think um, GiveLify is an app that you can download onto your phone, a smartphone, and you can give through that. And um, if you don't have a home church and you would like to support the ministry of our churches, you, you're more than welcome to download that app and uh, give through that as well. <clears throat> um, Psalm chapter 1 is where we're going to be going tonight, and I pray that the Lord has blessed you through this uh, crisis that we're experiencing in our world. Uh, I know that through through it all, that there's been a lot of things that I've learned. And um, w when I come out of this, I, I want to be stronger. I, I want to be more godly. I want to be uh, more holy. I feel like that God is allowing us to go through this to maybe strip us of some things that, that had been holding us back. Uh, from getting to him and closer to him and uh, God dropped a nugget in my spirit right before I went live I think it's very important that we make sure that we understand that in a few weeks Lord willing that we will be going back to church it seems like on Wednesday nights Thursday nights uh, Sundays that we have been already just over a few week period have grown accustomed to not go into an actual building to to fellowship and to congregate together with uh, brothers and sisters of black precious faith. I thank God for the people in our two churches. I've heard it numerous times, especially this week, uh, that people want to be back at church. They want the fellowship, and I'm so thankful for that because it would be so easy to grow cold and not desire that anymore. But I, I'm hearing the exact opposite from the people that I pastor uh, at least for, from uh, several. I, I haven't heard from a, every single person, but I'm sure that they, they share the same sentiments. Sorry, I've already taken long, longer than, than I wanted in the introduction. So, um, Psalm chapter 1. I don't think there's a more clear contrast uh, drawn anywhere in, in the Bible between righteousness and wickedness. God makes it very clear in these six short verses of chapter 1 of Psalms of what he wants out of the righteous people and what the wicked uh, or the ungodly or the sinners is going to receive. Now, it's not that God gets any great pleasure out of sending people to hell. You know, the, the Bible tells us that um, God is not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want any person to go to hell. Uh, but at the same time, we also have to understand that if, if we want to partake in, in God's uh, blessings and in God's, God's eternity, His plan for eternity, then we should strive and we must obey uh, what it takes in, in God's plan uh, to make that happen. So I, I pray that you get this handout because it's it's about eight or nine pages, I think, six or eight, something like that. Uh, and it is a much more detailed than what I'm going to be able to get into here in this live video. Um, I, I want to say something, and I, this is also in the handout, but for several years, I would imagine 10, 10 years, plus or minus, I, I don't know when it was, that, that God um, took me to Psalm 1, and I can't remember how many weeks that I stayed in Psalms chapter 1. Um, I, I would guess that I've read and meditated on Psalm chapter 1 several hundred times. Uh, maybe 
even a thousand or more. I, I don't know how many times, but there's there's often been times that I would uh, open a, my Bible app called Blue Letter Bible and I and I would play it uh, seven times in a row because it, there, that's a feature in that. You can set it to read it to you seven times in a row, and I've done that countless times. It 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 just marinates in my spirit. It feeds me. It it encourages me. It challenges me. It reminds me that if if I want to be godly, then then I have to follow God's expectation of righteousness. It's not my own. Uh, these sh- six short verses begins with the word bless encompassing what it takes to receive that blessing. <clears throat> it ends with the, the, the words, the ungodly will perish. The ungodly will perish. And sandwiched in between the, these two verses, verse 1 and verse 6, is the dawning of a revelation. If you will read it and study it, it, it will, God will give you a new light, a new understanding. At least I, he did me. God loves righteousness and loathes wickedness. I think it's important to note that God loves righteousness as defined by Him, not defined by us. <clears throat> uh, not self-righteousness. That's not who God called us to be. Uh, not, not righteousness as defined by your family or your grandparents or your aunt or uncle. Not, not uh, righteousness defined by your church, especially not righteousness defined by a denomination or any other source, but God expects us to follow after righteousness the way that he describes it and defines it in his word. To define this word, and I think it's advantageous for us to understand what the term righteousness really means. If you go to dictionary.com, which is what I probably use more than anything, it, it simply means it's the quality or the state of being righteous. So to be righteous would surely indicate that we would need to strive and emulate the one in which righteousness is derived. Okay? Do you get that? If we want to be righteous, then we should strive after the one in which righteousness comes from, okay? Righteousness comes from God. There is no righteousness outside of God. There is none. Think about it. Any moral code, any spiritual code, C-O-D-E, not C-O-L-E, C-O-D-E, anything righteous has its roots back to God and His Word. How we live our lives, how we conduct, uh, how we treat one another, uh, marriage, uh, you know, something as, as controversial as abortion. I mean, that that's that. There's no that the, there there is no uh, two ways about it. God hates abortion. Okay, He hates hands that shed innocent blood. Okay, that's righteousness, and, and that starts in God. It's rooted in Him. And there's several other scripture verses that uh, that point us to righteousness. It should be accepted without reservation that Jesus Christ is the source of righteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 tells us that. Philippians 3, 9 declares that our righteousness is a faith. In other words, trusting God, trusting His Word and His plan, even when it doesn't make sense. Did you know that right now people probably think that Christians are crazy? I, as a matter of fact, I know that, there, that uh, there's folks out there that think that we're crazy, that God would flood the earth and there would be one man and his family saved on a big boat. Uh, they, they would call us crazy when, uh, when we say that we believe that Jesus and Peter literally walked on water or that Jonah survived three days in the belly of a well or that God spoke the sun into existence in the moon or that God spoke and the waters divided from the dry land. <clears throat> but my faith in God tells me that this happened. It doesn't tell me that um, that the, uh, the uh, Darwinism is right. It doesn't tell me that some other religion is right. But my faith in God and His Word tells me, and it helps to make me righteous. 
it doesn't make sense how in a human mind that these things could happen. And, but that's where faith kicks in. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 tells us, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Uh, I want to encourage you tonight, and I'm, I'm going to keep continue on, but I want to encourage you with this. It doesn't matter who is around you saying that you, sh that you shouldn't live for God, or you shouldn't do this, or, or, or maybe they're saying you don't have to live so close to God, and you don't have to obey certain parts of Scripture. Let me tell you something, friend. Man, I believe that we have to obey everything from Genesis to Revelation in context, okay? Uh, I'm thankful that, that we understand what that means. We have to rightly divide the Word, and Scripture tells us that. Um, anyhow, let me go on. Um, so there's three things here in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, that, that, that are the do nots. It says, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Do not stand in the way of sinners. Do not sit in the seat of the scornful. And I underline this, and I made this in bold font if you have the handout. So if we want to be blessed, remember the first word of this chapter is, is the word blessed. So if this is what it takes to be blessed, meaning that we don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, we don't stand in the way of sinners, and we don't sit in the seat of the scornful, that's what it takes to be blessed. So if that's what it takes to be blessed, then to do the opposite of this would, would be by default easy to assume that we would be cursed, okay? Blessed on one hand, okay? Cursed on the other. It's our choice. God, God's not going to make us. It's something that we have to desire in so much that we act upon it. We do something. We can say that we have faith, but what if we never do anything with it? We can say that we believe in the Bible, but how much dust has accumulated on the Bible uh, in, in our home? Right now, there are more Bibles in, in print in America than there ever has been, but it's, it's read less now than it ever has been. Now, I want you to think about that, okay? Um, so, verse 2 begins, and please download this handout on this. Um, I, I, if you're watching on my personal Facebook page, I, I put the link inside uh, of the post uh, in, in the comment section. If you're in one of our churches, then you should have that on the uh, inside of the group, okay? So, verse 2 begins to lay out the, the do's. Verse 1 was about the don'ts. So, verse 2 talks about the do's, okay? So instead of evil and wicked associations with ungodly people, the blessed man takes great delight. He gets great joy in God's word. Not only does he get great delight in it, but he meditates upon it. Have you ever marinated uh, maybe some kind of meat that you, would, that you would want to grill or bake or whatever, you know, put in a crock pot? When you, when you meditate on God's word, it's, it's like a marination in your mind and in your heart. Uh, I love what the Faith Life Study Bible says, and this is in the handout also. The Hebrew word here means to murmur or to read out loud the Word of God. Read it out loud, to murmur, sit and, and, and re repeat it and recall it. And, and it also has a connotation connected to it to, uh, to have the meaning to ponder on something. Uh, that's a word that maybe is not used so much, uh, the word ponder in the English language as much as it used to be. But uh, I ponder a lot. I think a lot. And uh, I, I would encourage you to start pondering on the Word of God. Read it. Marinate it. Let, read it out loud. Uh, memorize a verse. Ponder on it. Think about it. Talk to someone else about it. Hey, let me share this with you. What do you think about this? Let them share a, a verse with you and, and just talk about it. Um, let me go on. Verse 3 lays out the similarities between us and a well-watered tree. Man, I want to spend so much time here, but I'm I try to keep these videos short because of attention spans. So I, I encourage you again to please uh, get this handout. Uh, this is the biggest part of this Bible study is is the uh, the commentary on verse three. It lays out the similarities between us and a well watered tree. In other words, when we follow the previous two verses in this chapter. David says that we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Rivers, plural, rivers, multiple, more than one. And we also see a connection to, to rivers in the New Testament when Jesus said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers, 
plural again, more than one, of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, that everyone that believes on him should receive. That's important. Because just because that you believe on the Lord does not mean that you automatically receive His Spirit. There's no verse to, to connect that. But when you, when you believe on Jesus, then you, you're going to put action into what you say that you believe. What if you told your wife or your husband that you, that you love them, but you never show that you love them? Are they going to feel like you truly adore them, that you truly love them. So if we tell God that we love him, then we need to show him that in the way that we live, in the way that we conduct ourselves. And we need to seek for the baptism of his spirit. Um, please, again, get these notes. Um, and if you have trouble downloading them, message me and I'll email them to you, okay? Verse 4 begins to pronounce uh, a judgment of sorts on the ungodly enhancing or further uh, broadening the contrast between the righteous people and the wicked people. The Bible says there, the, the ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not like the, the, the righteous, in other words. They will not prosper. They can't prosper. And, and I don't want you to think about prosper, uh, someone being prosperous in the light of Western culture. Western culture says that if someone is prosperous, it means that they have a big home and new automobiles and they have a, have a bass boat and a pontoon. They've got a camper. They've got, you know, a vacation home in Florida. That's not the kind of prospering that God is talking about here. You know what God is concerned about? You know, he promised us that he'd never leave us or forsake us. He promised that he would bless us with, with the provision that we would need here. But you know, ultimately what God is more concerned about than anything else is getting your soul saved from going to hell. Folks, that's not preached anymore in most churches. The, 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 the term or the place hell is hardly ever even mentioned. But I'm encouraging you and I'm telling you that you do not have to die lost. You can be born again of water and the Spirit and go to heaven for eternity to be with Jesus and the host of angels and the river of life and the street of gold. The walls of Jasper. What a promise. Who would not want to experience that? Anyhow, verse 5 brings the lowering of a hammer or an axe. It's, it's so powerful and potent. And um, again, I, I invite you to, uh, to research this and download these notes. Uh, I've sought God, and this is in my notes, for a greater understanding of what that meant when it, well, in verse 5 where it says the ungodly are not so, uh, and they're not standing in the judgment. And I think that I have gained an understanding that it means the, that they will not stand uh, stand acquitted or forgiven in the final moment of time, in the, in the final judgment. The eucumenical movement, which is this idea that everybody is going to heaven and all the religions can come together, and let me just put it like this, and we can all uh, hold hands and we can all sing Kumbaya, okay? and you serve God your way, and I serve God my way. It doesn't matter. Uh, God loves us all, and he's, all, he's going to take all of us to heaven whether we want to go or not. That is not what Scripture says. That is so anti-Bible. Um, that, that's, that's, as, that's as big of a lie that's, uh, as ever been told by the devil. There's no bigger lie. The fact is, that we have to be born again of water and the Spirit. It's not a sinner's prayer. It's a process, just like a natural birth. That's what Jesus likened it to. You've got to be born again. Um, Jesus loves you. That's a fact. Jesus does not want you, or, nor me, nor my family, nor your family to die lost. Here's a question, and I, I'm ending right here. I, this is 20 minutes. It's longer than any Bible, uh, Bible study video that I've done. Jesus is coming back, and I've seen a lot of things on social media. Almost everyone agrees with that statement, that Jesus is truly coming back very soon. What are you doing to prepare for that moment? What are you doing... And how can we help you to get prepared for that moment? I'm not trying to scare you. 
I'm trying to prepare you for eternity. Jesus loves you. I love you. I know most of you probably that's watching this in one shape or form or fashion, but I, I probably don't know every single person that's watching this. But I'm telling you that God draws a very <clears throat> clear contrast between righteousness of the saints and the wickedness of the world. And the devil would want you to believe that you can continue living in unrighteousness and wickedness and still make it to heaven. But that's not God's plan for you. God's plan is that you'll be washed white. Revelation says that uh, it mentioned the, the righteousness of the saints being the, the, the white robes <clears throat> is what John likened it to. White, pure, holy. Um, there's only one way in, and it's through the door, and, that's, and the door is Jesus Christ. I invite you to contact me, uh, message me on Facebook. If you have my cell phone number or, or uh, my office number, please use it. Call me. I want to help you. I really do. If you're uh, dealing with depression and oppression or dealing with situations that's maybe overwhelming you, I I'm here to help you. Um, I, I love you. I, I, I sincerely do. I'm here to help people to get to heaven. That's what, that's what I breathe for. That's what my heart beats for. That's my passion. I want you to be in heaven with me. I want to say a short prayer, and I want to petition heaven that God moves in your life right where you are, wherever you are. I don't care if you're in Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Georgia, Florida, California, Canada, doesn't matter where you're at. God can reach down into your home and give you hope. Father, we thank you tonight for this Bible study. We thank you for the word that tells us that you love righteousness and that you would promise, Lord, to make us righteous if we would obey you. Lord, I plead your blood right now over every home and every, every person that's watching this, regardless of their age, regardless of what they've done, Father, I pray that your spirit will begin to draw them, tug on the strings of their heart, and let them know, God, and let them be assured that you want to save their souls from dying lost. You are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord Jesus, I pray that as uh, these people download this, these Bible, this Bible study handout, that they will study this even further, God, than what I could uh, put together tonight. Lord, let this word, let your word speak to their heart. We give you thanks in all things. In the only saving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. I look forward.